Because they've been bought en masse for businesses, these Dell Thunderbolt docks are some of the cheapest options on the market, if you're happy to buy one that's used. So I got this Dell WD19TBS Thunderbolt dock for £50, but is it actually any good to use with a Mac? And does it even work at all? Let's have a look and find out. To start with, let's go down and take a quick look at some of the ports that you get on the dock itself. Now my model is the WD19TBS, there's also a WD19TB. The difference between the two is the S model doesn't have an audio jack on the front, whereas the non-S model does. It's not something that I need personally, so no issue there, but that's gonna be like an ongoing thing with this dock. It's gonna be very personal as to what do you need and what don't you need as to whether it's gonna work for you. The IO and the ports that you get are kind of limited compared to some of the more well-known docks out there on the market. So firstly, there's one fixed Thunderbolt cable on the dock itself, so you can't detach it or replace it or make it longer, or if it fails, fix it, like, it's fixed. You can't take it out. Then on the back, you get one Thunderbolt 3 port to use for whatever you wish. You get a gigabit ethernet port. You get two USB-A 3.1 Gen 1 ports, so that's five gigabit speeds. The rest are display related, so there's two DisplayPort 1.4 ports, one HDMI 2.0 port, and then there's a USB DisplayPort multifunction port, so you can use it for display, but you can also use it for other things as well as a USB-C port. And then when we come around to the front, again, you get limited options compared to some of the other docks that are out there on the market. You literally get one USB-A 3.1 Gen 1 port and one USB-C 3.1 Gen 1 port. So again, they're both limited to five gigabits per second data transfer rate. There's no mention of specs anywhere as far as how much power they output, but they do output some power. I have charged things from them. I would imagine it's probably 7.5 watts power, but I can't tell you either way because I can't find that spec anywhere. But they're okay if you just want to charge something up a little bit here and there. So before we go any further, let's talk about those four display connections on the back because we're using this with a MacBook. Now, unfortunately, the way that a Mac outputs external displays this dock is not gonna to work to do four monitors uh, by any means. So you can only actually use one of those four ports. So you can use either the HDMI port, one of the display ports, or the USB-C multifunction display port, whatever they're calling it. You can't use more than one of those. If you do, it will kind of work, but you'll only get mirrored displays. You won't get extended displays. You don't be able to do different things on each monitor, so it's kind of defeats the purpose, right? But I will also add, while you're using either the HDMI or display ports on there, you can use the USB-C display port socket to connect something else like a hard drive or webcam, whatever you want it to be. So you can't do dual displays at all? Well, you can, but there's kind of a catch, obviously. First, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your MacBook is even capable of outputting multiple monitors. Some of them are not. I believe you have to have an, a Pro chip, like I have an M3 Pro. Um, I know like some of the base model M3s will only output one but it varies depending on the chips and the m4s i think are different again they now do have multiple displays so don't listen to me check the specs for your specific macbook and your specific spec to make sure that yours can do dual external displays otherwise this isn't going to work anyway but the way you do dual displays on this is you're going to have to connect one to one of those four ports we spoke about the second one is going to have to be connected to the thunderbolt port on the back of the dock so that could mean that you've got a USB-C or Thunderbolt connection on your monitor, or it could mean that you have to use a USB-C to DisplayPort cable or a USB-C to HDMI cable. They're out there, make sure you get the right one. They can be unidirectional, so make sure what you get is correct. And when you do that, it, it does work. However, it's not perfect, okay? And I can only speak for my specific setup. Anybody who's used docks like this before will know that they can be very finicky and act weird depending on a specific setup. So. Let me tell you what I've got and the issues I've had. My specific setup is two monitors and I have one 1440p monitor, which is 144 hertz refresh rate. And the second one is like an ancillary display. It basically is there to watch YouTube on while I'm doing other things. And it's a 1080p monitor at 60 hertz. So I can get them to both work at full resolution and full refresh rate from the dock but I have to be very specific with it. So I have to plug the main 1440p display monitor into the Thunderbolt dock first, and then I get 144 hertz refresh rate. Then I plug the 1080p monitor in second into HDMI, and I get 1080p 60 hertz, and the main monitor carries on working as it should. So it does work. If I plug the 1080p monitor in first to HDMI, and then plug the main monitor in to Thunderbolt, I get 1440p, 
but I only get 30 hertz for some reason, and I can't figure out why it makes a difference as to which order I plug them into. But even using better display on the Mac, I don't even have an option for anything higher than 30 hertz. It doesn't even let me choose 60 or 120 or 144. I literally only get 30. So you probably sat out there going, well, stop moaning then, just plug that one in first, right? What's the big deal? Well, the big deal is when you use one of these docks like this, the whole point is the convenience of connecting one cable to your MacBook when you come to your desk. And then when you walk away, you unplug one cable, pick up your MacBook and you're off on your merry way, right? Come back home, plug it in and everything works. That's the point. Now, if it's working correctly when I plug in the main monitor first and everything's fine, I can keep using it like that. As soon as I unplug the Thunderbolt from the Mac and plug it back in again, the MacBook then only recognizes that the main monitor is 30 hertz again. I can't get anything higher. So then to correct that, I have to then unplug both displays from the dock, plug them back in in the right order, and then I get the full display. It sounds like such a first world problem that, oh, you've got to unplug a cable and plug it back in, but you just want it to work, right? That's the convenience. Ideally, I'd like to just put this under my desk somewhere out of the way, plug one cable in, keep everything clean, and it just works when I when I need it to, but it doesn't quite work like that, but you can get it to work. So what I've actually ended up doing is connecting the 1080p monitor to the dock via HDMI and kept all the other ports open for other things. And then I've connected the main display directly to the MacBook via USB-C cable to one of the Thunderbolt ports on the Mac. And then when I do that, I have two cables to unplug and plug back in, but everything is remembered correctly. Everything works and I haven't had any issues since doing that it just means i've got two cables instead of one big deal not really but you know but it does give me a fairly clean setup where i've got the dock on the desk i've got two ports plugged into the mac and then it leaves me with a few extra ports on the dock to be able to connect other things such as webcams hard drives ssds whatever you need to connect to it controllers mice keyboards, whatever it might be that you want to connect up, you've now got that option and it's kind of handy. It's on the desk and you've now got USB-A ports as well, which is a bonus in some cases, right? It obviously also gives you a gigabit ethernet port as well. Now, personally, I don't really have a need for it. I've got really good Wi-Fi 6 e throughout my house. Never have any issues with losing connection or slow speeds or whatever. So I don't actually use that because I haven't got like a NAS connected to this any of these systems or anything like that. But if you do need it, then you do get gigabit ethernet. It does work and I haven't had any issues. I've tested it out briefly, but it's not something I use myself. And the other ports all work just as you would expect. Now they are obviously limited to five gigabits per second. The Thunderbolt one is gonna give you more because it is a Thunderbolt 3 port on the back there. Although remember you are using bandwidth for the monitors and other stuff that you've got connected. But the others are all limited to five gigabits per second. Now that sounds slow when we're used to hearing 40 gigabits per Thunderbolt and 10 gigabits for Gen 2 USB-C, but in real world use, most things are gonna work okay from it. I connected my Samsung T7 SSD to one of the USB-C ports on the dock, and as you can see here, the speed results are pretty decent, and according to Blackmagic, it's fine to edit 4K video straight from it through one of these five gigabit per second ports. I haven't done it, I don't have a need to, but it should work. And yeah, apart from that, all the other things I've connected, I've tried webcams, capture cards, keyboards, mice, all sorts of different things that I have laying around, and they've all worked absolutely fine on the five gig ports. Really not an issue for me. Now, if you need 10 gig ports, or if you need faster, more Thunderbolt ports, and more bandwidth, then you will know. That's probably like a use case that you know. But if you're using general everyday things, if you just want to plug things in and out, if you've got nothing that depends on super high bandwidth, then you're probably gonna be okay. Although you don't have loads of ports, you've got a few. Apart from all of that though, I did run into one issue and I think this is an actual faulty unit. Bear in mind, I did buy this used. I wasn't entitled to any warranty or anything like that. I've seen other people with the same issue who have managed to get it replaced by Dell. So if you do buy one of these used, buy it from somewhere where you can get a warranty and get an exchange or a replacement or return or something like that, I would say. But um, here's the issue. <laughs> The fan would just come on completely at random, even under no load. Even when the MacBook was sleeping, I could come into the room at times and the fan would just be going and it is loud. Like you heard it on that video. It's hard to just like, it's hard to get across on video how loud it is, but it is loud. Like turn up your speakers loud to actually be able to hear YouTube video if you're watching it or something like. It is loud, it came on for no reason whatsoever and it wouldn't stop until you power cycle the dock. You'd have to unplug the power from the dock, connect it back up 
and then it would stop again. And then it was just a matter of time until it started again and it was so frustrating hearing it. Now I tried firmware updates. Bear in mind, if you wanna update the firmware on this, you're gonna need a Windows machine. You can't do it by Mac. Dell doesn't offer an option for that. Uh, but firmware updates didn't fix it. It still kept doing it. So after Googling around, I came up with the most janky fix possible for it. Not really a fix. I just ripped this piece of metal out of it. I took it apart. Now I will say the dot comes apart quite easily. It's not that difficult to take apart. It's just screws on the bottom. You have to peel off the rubber matting off the bottom to get it open. But once you do, you can get it open quite easily. And this piece of metal was basically a shroud around the fan, which was directing air for a very narrow space and was making it sound really whooshy, loud sound. Since I've done that, when the fan does come on, it's much quieter. But interestingly, the fan hardly ever comes on. Now, I don't know if that now means the air from the fan is spreading over a wider surface area and cooling whatever was causing it to spike, because it's obviously some sort of temperature sensor in there somewhere. But now it rarely comes on, and when it does come on, it makes a sound, but it's nowhere near as loud as it was with this in there. Um, so weird fix, not recommending you probably do it. Like I say, buy one with a warranty, just in case you do need to return it. There, there is a lot of them out here that have this issue. If you Google it, you'll see a lot of people having exactly the same problem. So get one with warranty or get one where you can return it if it is faulty. Um, probably this is not the best solution, but it was the only solution I had to actually make it bearable because that was too noisy. So to sum it all up, is a Dell Thunderbolt dock the best budget option to use with your MacBook? Well, as far as price goes, if you buy a used one, absolutely the price is great compared to any other Thunderbolt dock out there. The others are much harder to find used. And when you do find them used, they still tend to hold a lot more of their value. I don't know how these ones are coming about so cheap. It's probably people taking them home from work. I don't know, um, no insinuations but they are out there for a really good price for what they actually can do. But whether it's the best solution or not is gonna be a very personal thing. I would say if you just wanna connect up one monitor and you just want a few extra USB ports and that kind of stuff with the option of a Thunderbolt port to plug something a little bit faster into, should you need it, then this could definitely work for you and it will definitely do what you need it to do. If you're looking for an alternative to some of the CalDigit Ivanki docks that are out there on the market this isn't a replacement for those if you need all those extra ports if you need 2.5 gigabit ethernet if you need sd card readers if you need loads of usb ports 10 gigabit usb all of that kind of stuff this isn't going to be a replacement for that but like i said if you've got one monitor and you just want to plug in a few extra peripherals it's going to work and it's going to do the job so it's highly dependent on your personal use case whether this is good or not. If it fits for what you need it to do, then absolutely this is the best budget option if you wanna save some money, but that's not gonna be the case for everybody. So if you've been considering it and you've got questions, do leave me a comment down below. I'll try my best to answer all of the questions if I can. I don't have everything available to test and try things, so I can't maybe explain everything for you, but I will do my best to answer any questions that you have to see if it is right for you. And if you enjoyed this video, there'll be a whole load more tech-related content coming up. So please hit that subscribe button and hopefully we'll get some of the other more expensive fancy docks to test the stuff as well eventually. But we're doing what we can. We're on a budget here and maybe it will save you some money. So hit the sub button and hopefully I'll see you all really, really soon. Until next time, people, stay bandproof. Peace.